If I've got this right, the simplest definition of a eutectic metal is two or more elements, metals, that are combined into an alloy that becomes eutectic because it melts at a lower temperature than any or either of its constituent parts, elements, metals. What that means is like a solder, a low temp solder, a combination mostly I think of tin and lead, melts at a low enough temperature that you can solder copper together and the solder melts before the copper does. There are applications inside of fire sprinklers and inside of electrical fuses. And around this shop, you'll find this particular fields metal in the occasional application where it's handier than epoxy, easier to clean up, quicker to set up, and gets me back to work, you know, a little quicker than waiting on a chemical reaction. Rather, I'm just waiting on a freezing point. So that's been in there, I don't know, three or four minutes, and it's room temperature. And the thought is that the eutectic metal runs into the space between the box end wrench and the rounded and ground off and sort of abused bolt head. I'm gonna take the nut off the bottom, see if we can work that thing out of there and see if it's actually strong enough to do any good. So we're gonna pull that out. There's what it looks like. Let's take it out of the blacksmith shop and see just how much torque that thing will stand. All right, so there's a 3 8 nut coarse thread. Run it onto those poor old threads, getting a little tight. I'm gonna run it right on up to where the threads quit. Put it in the vise. All right, it's coming tight. Let's see how hard I can twist on this before it fails. Getting tighter. Pretty good, pulling pretty hard. That stuff is not as hard as other metals, but boy, it might get you out of a jam. Oh, there it's stripping. It's just rolling around on that round head at that point. I'm gonna have to put some heat on there to get it out. Let's tap that out of there. I'm gonna tap that. So it conformed to the wrench very well. Let's break that apart and see what it looks like in there. Stronger than solder probably. Probably not as strong as pewter. Interesting, let's go back and see what that spot's like in the middle of my brand new bench. Oh, loose, just sitting there. Still warm to the touch. Ninety-four degrees. No, it's hotter than that. Yeah, that's it's probably still 120 degrees. Anyway. We're gonna add all these pieces to the collection and probably pour them into the hilt of a sword. So this handle for extra large sledgehammers was not big enough for this extra large sledgehammer. We're gonna see how eutectic metal works to fill in that gap. That's it, for better or for worse. So what have you used this stuff for, Wadsworth? Well, I've got three different things right here. First of all, I used it to lock in the bolt heads of these vices, because when I put these dowels in here, there's no getting to the heads on those things. To, if I need to tighten or loosen the bolts that hold these vices down and over here, and so the hole down underneath there with the head of the bolt has eutectic metal in it and the dowel over the top. That's one. The next one I did this years ago. It was one of the first uses. This is a bee swarm catcher for my wife. It was a Mother's Day present years ago. And the idea is when bees swarm, they often clump on a branch and I can click on concrete handles and get up there as high as you want 
you run that around the swarm and bang, the branch, the swarm drops into the bucket, you bring it down, and you shake it into the waiting box, brood chamber, whatever you're using, nuke box. And then the last one that frankly is the most satisfying is I use it on my swords. For instance, this sword is for Holly. This sword is, was my wife's. I'm getting scabbards made for both of them. But right here inside of this little ferrule, this socket, which attaches to the hilt. See, this hilt is just friction fit on there. When that hilt has this socket soldered to it, visualize that there's a void there. I pour that little void full of eutectic metal and you get a 100% tight embedment, metal to metal all the way around, that in my opinion is way better than epoxy and makes the hilt and the socket and the handle function as one piece. And besides that, who doesn't like messing with swords? Anyway, put it in your toolkit. Fields metal is non-toxic. Woods metal, which is the next higher melting point eutectic metal, has lead and um, cadmium. Neither of those are good on your cornflakes. But you know what? Neither is epoxy. All right, so wrapping it up. I've used it a few times, maybe half a dozen times. I'll probably use it maybe half a dozen times more, except for the swords I've got to make for the grandkids, maybe a half a dozen new use cases before I die. And so you say, is it worth it? I mean, you're doing a lot of fiddling around Wadsworth, a lot of tests, a lot of research and development, a lot of goofing off. You know, there's value to goofing off a little bit. Is getting familiar with a eutectic metal goofing off in a shop? I don't know. But if you don't spend a little time trying something new, doggone it, you're gonna miss a boat. You might miss the big boats. If you get so constrained and so focused on only doing what I already know, well, don't be surprised if when you die, you only know what you already knew. And that's a loss. So keep your eyes open, keep your mind open, keep your ears open. And every once in a while, something's gonna come along that's just gonna tickle you. And that's part of doing good work. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman. Keep up the good work.